Well met, everyone. You know, I really always like my early morning. I always have that kind of orcish gruff to my words. And, of course, naturally, I've got coffee. Today, oh, sorry. I'm going to be making a 5th edition D&D character. I'm going to use the D&D Beyond interface. And what I want to talk through is finding inspiration for that character. And what I'm going to use is a Guild Wars 2 character that I made five years ago or whenever the game came out. I think he's the very first character that I ever made in the game. I leveled him all the way to max level from 1 to 80 over the course of a few years. And I want to use that character. More so the visuals to kind of inform what kind of character I might want to play in D&D. Your DM, let's just pretend for a moment, your DM comes to the table and says, hey folks, I'm going to be running a new world, a new setting, and I need you guys to make characters. There's a million and one options out there. There's a lot of different ways to go about character creation. And, of course, there's no right way, there's no best way, there's no wrong way. What I'm showing you on screen is just one way, it's not the only way. I don't have any intention of ever playing D&D anytime soon in the foreseeable future, and I'm not going to be bringing this character to the table. I'm just doing this for demo purposes to show you that if you've watched Joker lately, you can make a character inspired by Joker. If there's some character you've seen in a book or played in a video game, there's a lot of inspiration out there, so you should never be stuck as to at least the spark that gets things churning in your mind as to what you might want to play, okay? There's a lot of different ways to go about this. So on screen here, you're going to constantly see the little moving char that I have. That is my character. You'll notice it's very big, very large, very creature-like. It looks kind of monstrous. That immediately informs me as to what I'm not going to be playing as a race and as a class, or as a race, I should say, in 5th edition D&D. Now, in a video game, oftentimes the race is determined by just simple visuals, right? It's the aesthetics. That's the 3D model that I'm going to be staring at during the course of my playtime with that game. Of course, how I interact with that world and all the different buttons I can push, that's going to be based on my class. In the D&D space, your race and your class can oftentimes complement each other a little more efficiently than they would in a video game, where as I said, in the video game, or at least in Guild Wars 2, the race doesn't matter much. I can still play whatever class I want, no matter what race. There's no class race limitations in Guild Wars 2, so you can be a char wizard if you want to. What I'm thinking of right now is Goliath could fit. It doesn't have the visuals of it, but it does fit with the imposing physical size race. Dragonborn might fit because you'll notice my char has kind of like, you know, certain elements of dogish hyena jackal features combined with a little bit of like minotaur horns and such so you know what maybe that was just it right there i think we're going to kind of go down that path using it as sort of the i know in the game when they run they're they're a lot more hunched over so there's two big races in guild wars 2 you have the char and then you have the norn which are kind of very vikings like think of mountain from the game of thrones standing next to someone of my size normal size so that's the Norn. They're really tall, but they're very human looking. The Char, when they run, I think they kind of drop down on all fours. So they're, they have this sort of charging, kind of real aggressive sort of demeanor and posture to them. So I think I'm going to go with Minotaur, okay? That does not mean that I'm, I'm now restricted to Ravnica, right? Because any character you bring to the table, just your DM is simply going to say, hey guys, we're playing in this world or we're playing in this setting. And here's all the different races you can use, right? If they're official, the balance and the mechanical treatment should be efficient. So it opens up a lot of possibilities. So we're going to go with Minotaur. We'll confirm it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says all this good stuff. I'm blessed that I have everything on D&D Beyond. So we'll deal with all this later. Imposing presence. I get to choose a Minotaur skill. Intimidation or persuasion. Now here's where I really start delving into my character. Okay. Now here's the thing. In a video game, you're going to have certain attributes and features that you don't have control over, right? The storyline of that race and the lore and the details, the backstory, the way the NPCs talk about your race. But as I'm playing the char, as I'm playing that character, I'm formulating my own sort of role play scenario, right? I'm, I'm kind of creating a little more story in my own head based on how I interact and play with the character. When I made that character and as I played that character, how did I perceive that character was interacting with the world? And that's going to start informing 
some of these background and you know equipment choices and skill choices and such. So my char, while he looked that way, was not very intimidating. There wasn't any specific button or something in game that would show me, you know, there's no meter that allowed me to determine how much I intimidated a character. It wasn't like a Mass Effect dialogue option whereby having a really high intimidation or something like that, it might sway the conversation and give you a different conversation option. There was no interaction there, but I was a little more just kind of chill and, and, and behind the scenes. So I'm going to pick persuasion there, okay? We're going to move forward. Class. Now, this is an important one. I played an engineer. They're kind of hunter, rangery, range combat-ish, but they have a lot of gadgets. They have a lot of moving parts, Batman utility belt stuff. I'll use the background to kind of fill the niche of, or, or fill the the need to have all of these different gadgets and potions and, you know, a, a tool belt with 15 different things and that sort of stuff. You know, the trench coat that has 18 pockets in it. That's kind of what the char engineer looked like and felt like in Guild Wars 2. So I don't know, maybe I can go rogue because of course rogues can still sneak attack from range and whatnot. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go martial here. I'm going to pick fighter because as I'm making this character at level five, one thing I can also do is I can go down the path of battle master because using the various tricks and gadgets as my char did in Guild Wars 2, it gave me a lot more combat and tactical options than just Hulk smash. And I think a battle master fighter might fill that a little bit by giving me all of those different tactics and such. So we'll add the class. Just gives you the breakdown of all the different things you get. Uh, level five, which gives me some more options and more moving parts and buttons I can click on. So I will do survival. I was I, I explored a lot of the world. And, th and that's just the beauty of Guild Wars 2 is there's a lot of ways to go about gaining EXP. You can just go out there and do every dungeon, every storyline, you know, group play and just kill everything. Or you can just wander the world and try and uncover zones. And that's one thing I did a lot. So I like the that rangery nature in that regard. So I'm going to go with that. I would say perception. No, athletics. All characters in Guild Wars 2 have this dodge roll mechanic. It's kind of not fully action-based, you know, like first-person shootery, that level of action. But there's a lot more interactivity in the way you move in combat in Guild Wars 2 than there is in like a tab targeting game like a world of warcraft so every character has this dodging ability and the char the engineer especially when you start equipping certain skill sets and talent trees you can get like rocket boots and all this stuff and he was very mobile and moved around a lot so i'm going to give him some really good athletics there so fighting style archery defense okay he was not two weapon fighter he had a oh, i'm gonna go archery because he uses a gun a lot he uses range stuff um, and that's just the kit the default kit for Guild Wars 2. That is a little bit of a restricting element where the engineer just doesn't have the same weapon options that the warrior can use. In Guild Wars 2, the warrior class, I think they're called, they ha they can use anything in the game. Every one hand or two hand or range weapon and so on. The char are oftentimes restricted to like bows and rifles and such. Um, okay, martial archetype. I said I'm going to pick battle master, so let's go with that. Now ability. Oh, hold on. I got to pick some more stuff here. Um, okay, here we go. So this is important because they're based on their toolkit. That's the defining characteristic that separates an engineer in Guild Wars 2 from a ranger and from just a pure warrior. You're not dealing with smith tools and tinker's tools and behind the scenes stuff. No, these tool the toolkits that Achar uses are things that are usable in initiative. They're combat things. They're they're different toolbars that you have that you can press on to fight with, okay? Meaning that you can, like, throw bombs at people and hit them with your wrench and, like, drop a turret down and repair that and very Torbjorn from Overwatch, that type of stuff. So are there, you know, these are a lot more behind the scenes. They kind of might inform what sort of background and roleplay elements my character might have in D&D. So I don't know what's going to fit here. Visually, aesthetically, the toolkits look a lot like Tinker's tools. I'm going to choose Alchemist Supplies. And the reason why I'm going to choose that is of the, all the toolkits in Guild Wars 2, I felt like the the Alchemist toolkit, it can kind of almost entirely change your kit. It can change the way you play the game. You now don't, you're no longer just a range guy with a rifle that has turrets and stuff like that. When you click that button and switch to that, your rifle goes away and now you're throwing bombs and you have potions and you have sticky bombs and you have like traps that you set down and oils and greases. And so it kind of gave me that sort of essence. So I'm going to go with Alchemist Supplies, but I'm going to see. It would be something I'd ask my DM of, you know, how much can I incorporate my Alchemist Supplies into actual combat? Meaning if I don't want to use certain 
weapons and and things like this can i use alchemist fire and so on and so forth so uh, maneuvers i'd have to look at every one of these for video purposes and length i'm not going to worry about it too much but disarming is is a good one because a lot of times i mitigated a lot of my combat punishment or the damage i was taking by getting out of the way evasive footwork like i said you know, disarming attack is something where I just limit how much damage you can deal to me. I wasn't a whirlwind of death where my goal was to kill as fast as possible. I just outlasted them a lot. So riposte might be something good. Rally, I didn't, I never really did any group play in Guild Wars 2. I played very solo. Um, sweeping attack is a good one. Pushing attack, that's a good one. That reminds me. One of the core elements of um, the gun in your engineer toolkit or from a, an engineer perspective is you have this button you push and you you basically knock them back. You fall back as well. Like you actually jump backwards. Um, so it was a way that I can kind of get the guy from hitting me. So I'm going to use that. Um, Battle Master, as I said, ability score improve improvements. I'm not going to pick any feats. I probably could. And actually, you know what? I lied. I I'm just lying to you right now. I'm going to pick a feat. And the reason why I'm going to pick a feat is there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of toolkits. So maybe by using a feat, it might be a better way to incorporate all of the different tactical and option elements for me. In Guild Wars 2, it's more of what buttons are you pushing. You're not always obsessive about what my stat block is, right? That game is not designed in that way, whereas like in other games, in EverQuest or something like that, it's important what your, you know, your intelligence or something like this. I don't know if it's EverQuest, but, you know, intelligence directly relates to how much mana you have. So if you're gimping your intelligence, you don't have a lot of spell casting ability. In a Guild Wars 2, your stats were important, but there was a lot of, it was more based on what buttons are you pushing. And I feel like feats give me more buttons, whereas your stats give you more, I guess, die roll changes and modifiers, if that makes sense. You know what? I'm going to pick mobile. I moved around a lot. I just moved everywhere at all times. I mean, he was very quick, and the toolkit just afforded me that sort of gameplay. Your tactical nature in Guild Wars 2 and how you fight is based on just not staying in one place, right? You just don't have the damage output, and you don't have the survivability, the tanking ability that like a warrior or something like that might have, or a guardian, I should say, in Guild Wars 2, is you got to be on the fly a lot, and you have turrets over here, and then I throw this bomb over there, and then I roll back, and it's a pretty fun, very interactive gameplay mechanic. So if you're ever into Guild Wars 2, and you want a lot of options and a lot of moving parts, the engineer is probably, you know, among one of the most. We'll do standard array. Good enough. So I know he's very dexterous. I'm going to put my highest in that. He had a good con, and then he had a decent strength. And then um, I saw him as kind of wise. I never interacted with people much, so I'm going to leave my charisma really low. That's good enough. Fine. You noticed I picked that um, feat, so I don't have a whole lot of moving parts with my stats. Background. This is an important one. Okay, I'm not going to get into it too much because for me to obsess about everyone, there's just too many, especially since I have kind of everything popping up from every source. I didn't think through the background too much. You know, there's there's a certain lore, of course, and a story of where the char come from and what they're about. But as I kind of said in the beginning, I can wrangle my way through the gameplay aspects how I want and formulate my own background and story. I'm going to pick the Is It Engineer, okay? Just inventive intellect, a love of magical technology, unquenchable energy. Um, what else? You're a lab supervisor. You might even have a flamethrower. That's a huge toolkit. That's a massive, important thing in... It's one of the most fun elements of all of Guild Wars 2 is you can actually go into the complete. And you know what I'm going to do is at the end of this video, when I'm done with the character, I'm going to pull up some gameplay and I'm going to show you those different toolkits so you can just see how maybe the character that we made here in 5th edition D&D starts to tie in a little bit to some of the gameplay things that the actual Guild Wars 2 character was able to use. So I choose some artisan tools. I already chose the alchemist kit before. So now I think I'm going to take Tinker's tools language goblin because that feels closest to the asura in guild wars 2 so it would allow me to interact with that entire race within the world right so background features i don't nothing to click on it's just showing you all the different elements that's fine um choose starting equipment or gold i'll choose equipment is fine um let's see i'm gonna go chain mail and then i'm gonna go with um a martial weapon and a shield now yeah you do have a shield as well so let's go with, there's a lot here that kind of can immediately relate to what I'm thinking of as my character in, in a 
Guild Wars 2. So I'm going to pick a heavy crossbow, I think. You know what? There's a sword. I want to show you something. There is this awesome ability to pick as an engineer. You have kind of these like specialty classes. And they've it's completely changed the way the engineer plays. So I'm going to go with that. And then we have... Um, I'll pick the light crossbow. I'll pick the Dungeoneer's pack, I guess. Yeah, just a bunch of stuff. That sounds good. Ooh, artisan tools. So I'm going to pick some smith tools. Uh, see, I like that. I like that I have all these tools. Because of the background is it and because of you know some other starting class options i have smith tools i've got the tinker's tools and i have the alchemist tools so I, a lot of tools and that's exactly exactly how my uh my guy came out so there it is i think that's it if i was to go next let's see what we have same name his name is monk duggins he is a minotaur a level five battle master fighter he has all the appropriate moving parts and buttons you can click on and such. But because of background and equipment, you'll notice all the stuff that he has here. He's got a crowbar. He has a great sword. He's got crossbows. He's got, you know, the rope. He's got a shield. He's got smith tools, tinder box, torches, water skins, all the baseline, you know, starting equipment, that type of stuff. So really, really neat. Um, Arcana, athletics, investigation, persuasion, survival. They kind of fit for me. So really good. I'm happy with that. That's what my guy is going to look like. Not anything to write home about as far as stats go. He's got a good walking speed of 40 feet because I picked the mobile feet. So he moves around a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what that guy looks like in Guild Wars 2. And I think you'll see some of this stuff kind of linked up quite well. And it got me through character design. And that's a way that you can do it, folks. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of end the video. But like I said, I'm going to show some Guild Wars 2 gameplay in just a moment here. So that's one way of the thousand million and one ways that you can make a character just find something from a video game from a book from a movie use that as inspiration and create your character that way thanks everyone for watching i don't want to say take care because there's some gameplay coming up Oh, my God. 